The people on this list all have one thing in common and that is that they got to visit the depths of hell and live to tell the story. Some of them found God from their experience, others were just trying to make sense of it. All were glad they didn't end up trapped there for eternity. Maybe we can learn something from their stories. Coming in at number 5 we have 23 minutes. Bill Wise who is now an author had a life changing experience in November of 1998. It changed the course of his life and career forever. Bill is a devout Christian and believes in both heaven and hell. In an event that he compares to that of a dream, he described the experience of being plunged into hell. He said he felt like he was falling down a long tunnel. He was falling for what felt like an eternity of time. Finally he hit a solid floor. When he looked around he realized he was in a dark dirty prison cell. He said people often wonder if hell is hot or cold. From his experience he felt such an intense heat that seemed far too hot for life to even survive. When looking around the prison prison cell he had been dropped into he realized there were two large creatures in there with him. While he was there he witnessed other prisoners being pulled from their cell to be put through unimaginable pain. He could hear screaming from all directions, foul odors from beasts around him and raging pits of fire. He said after what felt like eons being trapped there he saw a bright light above him. He then felt himself rising up and out of the tunnel he had fallen through to land here. Following his vision Bill believed it was his life calling to share his experience with the rest of the world. After spreading his message as much as he was able, he wrote the book 23 Minutes in Hell. What felt like eons for him to experience was only 23 minutes once he was back in his mortal body. He will never forget his experience and hopes he will never be back there ever again. Coming in at number 4 we have Near Death Experience. Kenneth Hagen was born and raised in a family who followed Christian beliefs. When he was 15 he had a terrifying experience that led him to dedicate his life to the Lord and become a reverend. Kenneth suffered from a chronic heart condition and when he was 15 his heart stopped beating. He recalled a numbness spreading throughout his entire body. He then began to descend down. He was going further and further down as if he was going deeper and deeper into a dark cave or well. There was no light around him as he descended. He said he looked up and could see the lights of the earth but they were completely out of reach. They too faded away until he was completely surrounded by darkness. The darkness was unlike anything he had ever seen before. As he got further and further down he came across great flames of fire. For a moment he even felt relieved to be out of the complete darkness but this feeling didn't last long. He then started to feel the heat, it got hotter and hotter and he felt as though he could not breathe, it was so unbearable. Some demonic creatures noticed his presence and began to approach him. Fortunately for him the doctors were able to save him from this hell. They restarted his heart and he felt his soul return to his body. Since then he served God, he now works as a pastor to spread the word of the horrors that he witnessed. Coming in at number 3 we have 27 days. Matthew Botsford unlike the others mentioned was someone who didn't believe in religion or followed any faith or god. He had a horrific accident and was put into a medically induced coma to save his life following him being involved in a shooting. When Matthew did finally recover he told the story of what he had experienced while in his coma. He said the second he heard the bang he felt utter darkness. He then felt like he was in a void. He tried to scream but he realized that he couldn't. He felt incredible fear but there was nothing he could do to break free from the invisible hold that had come over him. He said he believed that it was hell, it was beyond anything he could describe. He suddenly felt like he was dropped from that hold and he started to fall a great distance. As he fell he got faster and faster. He knew if he was to hit anything at this speed it would be fatal. Still not understanding where he was or what was going on his brain scrambled for ideas but nothing came to him. He hit solid ground but he didn't feel pain that he had expected. He got up on his feet waiting for whatever would happen to him next. He began to run in any direction he could in the dark void room he had fallen into. Suddenly he saw a creature in the distance. He said it was tall with no features on its face. It looked like what he could only imagine was a demon. He ran in fear but no matter where he turned there it was walking towards him getting closer and closer. Finally it reached him. Frozen in fear all he could do now was look into the creature's void face as it reached out to touch him. The moment before it touched him he felt a tightness in his chest and he woke up. He said the experience was more vivid than any dream he had ever had. He had experienced things he didn't believe his brain was able to create on its own. He was shocked to learn he had been in a coma for 27 days. It felt like he was in that place for a year but only minutes at the same time. He said he will never forget this horrifying experience. Coming in at number 2 we have Ghost. How 
Howard Stern had been a devout atheist for most of his life until he had an experience that changed his mind and opened him up to the belief that something else was out there. At the age of 38 he suffered a perforated stomach. This caused him to have a near death experience. He crashed in the hospital and the next thing he knew he was stood next to his hospital bed. He could see his family and the doctors around him trying to save his life but as he spoke to them no one could hear him. When he tried to grab them his hand fell right through. He was starting to panic and fell back not knowing what to do. Then he saw a group of people at the door to his room. They were calling him over. Shocked that these people could see him, he walked over. They smiled and told him to follow them. As soon as he passed the doorway, he was surrounded by a thick fog. The people began to walk further and further down what was the hallway. He followed them. As he walked, he could see his room in the distance as it got further and further away. The people were being joyful and friendly as they told him to follow. This gave him hope that they were trustworthy. Trust no one. As they got further and further away from from his room their attitude began to change. They started to push and shove. The next thing he knew their faces had completely changed. They looked demonic. They began to feast on one another's flesh, fighting each other. He cowered on the ground not sure what to do when he heard a voice in his head. The voice was his own and it told him to pray to God. He screamed, I don't know how. Having never prayed before it was not something he felt comfortable doing but he was desperate to escape the place. He began to throw out phrases he had heard here and there. He shouted, Our Father who art in heaven, and one nation under God. He repeated these again and again. Suddenly, it worked. He was back in his body in the hospital bed. Since then, he questioned everything he had once known. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Trip to Hell. Dr. George Ritchie's experience happened in 1943 during World War II. He had temporarily passed due to pneumonia. He woke up in a hospital room. After noticing all of his belongings had gone, he decided to get up to look around. As soon as he stood up, he noticed that someone was lying in his bed. He did think this was odd as he had just gotten out of bed, but instead of wondering what was going on, he decided to leave. He wanted to get home. He stepped out into the hallway and out of the metal doors. Even though his home was miles away from where he was in the hospital, he decided to run back to his hometown. Again, in a strange way that he didn't think about at the time, he was there within minutes, faster than any train, plane or car would be able to carry him. On his way, he happened upon a small town with a decrepit red cap. Cafe. At this point, the doctor had not even considered that he had died or that all of these events were very strange. While looking up at the cafe from the path, a man crossed his path. He shouted over to him, but the man didn't respond. He didn't even glance over, it was like he didn't hear him at all. The doctor went over to tap him on the shoulder. His hand fell right through the body like he was made of nothing but air. In this moment, his whole life flashed before his eyes and he realized it was his body lying in the hospital bed. He turned back around as fast as he could back to the hospital. Once there, he found his room, looked over his body. It was then a dark figure appeared to him. He felt like he had to go with him, even though he knew he didn't want to. He was not taken straight to hell, but rather shown different versions of it. He was asked to choose his hell. The first looked just like Earth. The living and dead lived side by side. Only the living didn't know the dead were there, and they couldn't interact with anything in the world. He saw a bar where people were having drinks, and the dead were desperately trying to grab something to drink. But they weren't able to. It seems these souls will live forever being unable to grasp the things they once loved. The next was like nothing he had seen. It was a large desolate plain. It looked like the souls here were fighting over what little they had. They seemed angry and alone. He knew he didn't want to be in this place either. As he was confronted with his choice, he suddenly woke up. He told people of what he had seen trying to make sense of what happened. He was scared he would one day have to make that final choice and still, he didn't know which one was worse. Holy sh that was heavy stuff. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.